Pray God. I pray to bring me an understanding word. Put it in practice. God has told me that I need to do a message about pride, fullness of bread, and idleness. Question. Do you know which are the sins that brought the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah? There were two cities of the plain. The two cities of the plain, and God said, There were two cities in the plain, and God says, this, this was the sin of Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, and idleness. Many people believe that sin is many other things. Many people believe that sin, in fact, if you ask most Christians, they don't even know what sin is. Most Christians are very basic in their understanding of sin. This is why I need to put the battery. Father God, let me put the battery in. This is why, <coughs> and I put to put more because there's not going to be more power here in this video. So, must it, I'm going to put the video here. Okay. And my phone is here. I don't want to break the phone. Most people don't know what sin is. If you ask most questions, they have no clue. <clears throat> the thing is all about the outward thing. You can watch my videos and you can find out there's many, many things that people are doing that are not, that they don't know they're doing. And it just says two things. Love God, love your neighbor. Love God, love your neighbor. So if you don't love God, if you don't love your neighbor, you're not going to heaven. So in fact, sin has to do with these things, not loving God, not loving your neighbor. And you go back to Sodom and Gomorrah, were destroyed because of pride, idleness, fullness of bread. When you're proud, a proud person is someone, let's say they're two persons. They have the same experience. They have the same bank account. They have the same car. They have the same house. They have the same wife, the same friends. Everything is the same in their lives. One is a proud person, one is humble. Question, why? Question number two, does pride have to do? Does pride have to do with if a person is exalted or humbled in life or low degree or poor or something. No. You have poor people who are proud, poor people who are humble. You have rich people who are proud, rich people who are humble. You have billionaires who are proud, billionaires who are humble. So pride and humility has nothing to do with your status in life. Pride or humility has nothing to do with the kind of blessings you have in your life, in a great degree. It is true that most of the time, the rich people are proud, most of the time, richer people are wicked, most of the time, people who have too many things are more proud than the poor. Most of the time, so we're talking now about the three sins of Sodom and Gomorrah. Three sins are pride, fullness of bread, idleness. Pride, fullness of bread, idleness. If you would talk to someone today about these, these things, you say, oh, but someone is proud. Someone has too much to eat and someone is lazy. Oh, he's just lazy. Oh, they have a lot of food. Oh, he's a little bit proud. So the, nobody... 99% of people we would talk to about these things would never say it is anything wrong with it. It is no big deal. I mean, there's some people in church that are proud. Some people are not proud. Some people have too much to eat. It's not a sin. Some people, they don't like to work too much. They work a few hours, they go home, they work part-time. Me, some, some people just want to work part-time. There's nothing wrong with this thing. But do you know 
that the Bible says that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of pride. So what we can understand is that the things that are highly esteemed among men are abomination to God. Many people, many, many times people think something is a, such a way and they do not understand that God sees it as a very big deal, as a very big offense. Pride is a very big offense. To most people, it is not. To God, pride is a very big offense. To most people, a fullness of bread is no big deal. To God, fullness of bread is a very big offense. I'm not saying that if you have a lot of things, it's not a good thing. I am saying that if you have too much, when the Bible says fullness of bread, it's not saying it's a bad thing to be rich. In fact, it's a good thing to be rich. When you have money, you bless other people, you help them. The Bible says saying here that uh, Solomon and Gomorrah, they had too much, didn't help the poor, didn't help the hand of the needy. You can look at it. So their blessings made them to be selfish, to be self-concentrated, and to be total have no care to other, of other people, no love for other people. We continue with the first one, pride. Because pride is a very big deal for me, very big deal. Not for me, but for the Bible. The Bible says seven things God hates. And the first thing that God says is a proud look. God hates a proud look. The first thing that God hates is a proud look. I believe in my heart that even to be a prostitute, even to be a gambler, even to smoke drugs and alcohol, is not as a big deal as to be a proud person. Yet you can go to many, many churches around the world, and the churches have many proud people. Even the elders and even the pastors are proud. Proud, we just said, you can have two persons, same experience, one is proud, one is humble. The difference is, when the proud person receives the car, receives the money, receives everything, then they, they say, I'm a great person. They conclude that the car they have, the money, the blessings, the business, everything, the people praising him, the good, the nice person, everything, they will conclude that, they say, Deep down in their imagination, in their subconscious mind, they will say, I got all these things by my own power. In fact, the blessings I have, the car and the money and the millions I have, are the result of my own intelligence. So, because I have all these things, I must be a wise person. I must be very intelligent in business. I must be very skillful in accumulating money, in accumulating blessings and people's favors. The proud person will conclude that all these things can only come because of me. A proud person can go steps higher than pride and be super self-concentrated so much that they think the world revolves around, uh, around them. They believe that when they go out, people around them really need them. And they are the center of attraction of the world. And if they don't exist, the world will collapse. You have the same experience, and the, and the humble person has the same money, same blessing, same experience. But every time he receives car, money, blessings, finances, businesses, he only concludes, and in his mind, in his subconscious mind, he says, these are blessings of God. Oh, they got a great blessing, but well, it only comes from God. I got this other car that came into my life. It is an amazing gift of God. I got friends and many, a lot of love and blessings and, and on television. All these things come from God. 
The humble person will only conclude and say, exactly when the blessing comes, he says, this is from God. The ability to preach is from God. The knowledge I have is from God. The big bank account is from God. People praising me is from God. I don't want to become political. So this is the difference. So before we go to the next point, do you understand the difference? This is a big difference. Pride or humility does not matter. It makes no difference between the difference between the blessings people receive. It is only the way they see the blessing come to them. Either they give glory to God or they give glory to themselves. It is the only difference between a proud person and a humble person. This so-called and seemingly small difference makes the difference between someone being loved by God, close to God, and someone being totally wicked and a servant of Satan. This proud person here that receives all these blessings can be a Christian. He can go to church. He can be an elder. He can be a conference president. He can be a pastor and be a servant of Satan because of the attributes of his character. To be a Christian has nothing to do with your profession of faith. To be a Christian has all to do with your character. The traits of your character makes who you are. Either you are from God or from Satan. Any, Jesus says, learn of me for I am meek and lowly of heart. Learn of me, for I am meek and all in heart. So if Jesus is meek, we find out that in his life on earth, Jesus always gave the glory to his Father. The words that I speak, I don't speak of myself, I speak of the Father. I came forth for the Father, and he prayed to the... So he always gave glory to the Father, the showing an example that we need to do, even though Jesus could take glory to himself because he is God. Very different. So we see that in very high positions in the world, people are very, very powerful beings, and yet they remain humble. Because every time they get into position, or they receive blessings or honor, they give glory to God. I'm sorry to give this example. I'm not getting political, but Donald Trump is the most powerful man on the earth. Donald Trump is very, very powerful. He's the number one man in all the earth today. Yet, he has, he's no proud. He's very humble, very simple. We can talk to him normally like a normal person. Donald Trump could be someone that works at the store down the street. He can be a realtor uh, in a small town because the character is very, very humble. He doesn't see himself as better than other people, right? And you have uh, homeless people who are very proud. So this point, no big deal. And I think that most of you maybe that look at this video, you think it's no big deal. Well, God destroyed Sonoma Gomorrah because of this. It is very, very, very important. Point number two, fullness of bread. We saw that it's not too much having too many things. And I'm going to make a video on the point because last year there was a Sabbath school lesson about we should be humble and not have money. This Sabbath school was wrong. I will make a video, God willing, about the topic of money, which is very important. Christians, Adventists need to have money. The more money you have, the more blessings you can give, the more the work advances. Many times the work is not advancing. Ministries are not getting forward. Adventist missions have no money to bring to bring uh, uh, missionaries around the world. Yes, I mean, can you imagine if you have hundreds of billions of dollars, you bring the gospel, you finish the work. If you have businesses that give you a lot of money, you have free time to do the work because if you don't have money, you don't have time to do the work. If you don't have money, you're going to work full time morning to night and you're going to just work for a living and you cannot do evangelism. If you have a business, you work like one, two, three hours a day, you have many hours to do evangelism. Money is very important. 
money is the root of evil. The love of money is the root of evil. I mean, if you use the money, and this is the case of Sodom and Gomorrah, they had so much money, so much blessings, they hoarded the money for themselves and never helped people. First, God says you need to give 10% back to Him. Then, then uh, we need to uh, use the money for, for God's benefit too, because we give it for God. So, money is not evil. If you, if you had no rich people in the world, there would be millions of businesses that would close. Many hotels, many taxis, many restaurants, many uh, beauty salons and everything, they all many live because of the rich people. The travel, many rich people bring, go to cities and they spend money on hotels and everything, so it develops the business. If you had not this travel of rich people around the world creating new business needs and new um, uh, employments, that would, the world uh, situation would be much worse. So yes, the more rich people you have, the better it is. There is nothing wrong with being rich. In fact, if you are poor, if you are poor and you get to heaven, God will never give you extra blessing to be poor. On the contrary, God sees you that if you become a rich person, God will see you as a wise person that made more money so he could help more people. There is no virtue in being a poor person. Nowhere in the Bible it says it's a, it's a blessing to be poor. Nowhere. The examples of uh, uh, Job was extremely rich, the richest man in the East. Isaac, Jacob, this, uh, Isaac, uh, I think he's, Isaac, yes, he was super rich too. Abraham was super rich. <clears throat> so if it's wrong to have money, then why God did bless his people? <clears throat> because it's not wrong to, to be rich. It's okay to be rich. It's better to be rich than poor. You can be a good person and be rich. Do you know Warren Buffett is the richest man in the world? You can look it up, richest man, I think he has 98 billion dollars. Can you imagine? You have 98 billion dollars. And he lives in a small house and he has a small car. Right? He's very humble, very simple person. So number two, so the no, number two sin of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah is that they had fullness of bread. They had a lot of money, blessings, but they, it's not the blessings in itself, it's because they didn't use it to bless people to help people. They were super selfish. They could see a poor person close to them would never help them. Number three, sin number three they had is idleness. You know, I come from, I, I was born in France. And in France, you have millions of people, young people in France, millions of young people who do not work. The French government the French government will give money every month to anyone that, almost anyone that applies for a special help. There are millions of foreigners coming to France and they have special help from the government. They get 500 euros per month, plus they get free transportation. They get free doctors. They pay the rent half for free and they pay the phone bills. So when you have such people, millions of young people doing nothing all day because the government, if you get 500 euros a dollar, you can, you can go up to 1,000 euros and you get your 1,000 dollars every month from the government, you're going to do anything. So most people become wicked. They have too much time on their hands. They have no purpose. I mean, they have no purpose like uh, to evangelize the world, to help people, to have a mission, to have a, uh, uh, some society, to help the poor or anything. So, the Bible says that Sodom and Gomorrah's third sin was to, to the idleness, too much time on the hands, nothing to do, then God's going to use you to do evil things. Especially if you're not in the service of God, almost anyone that is idle, idle, they don't know what to do with the time. They, they are very wicked. So these three things that God made to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, these two cities, you can find them, that they're about a few miles away from Jerusalem. You go on YouTube, you find that archaeologist Ron Wyatt. He went over there and he found these cities. These cities are found now. You have thousands of sulfur balls around the city, covering the city. 
you can look it up on the internet, all the images are there, there it is all proven archaeologic fact that Sodom and Gomorrah are found today close to Jerusalem, maybe 40 miles or something, you can look it up on the internet and you find out that this city really was destroyed. <clears throat> Everything in the Bible is found. The Ark of Noah was found. The Ark of the Covenant was found. The chariots, when Pharaoh uh, crossed the Red Sea, were found. So all these things are found, and we know that these are the sins. The purpose of this video is that you may understand that many times people on earth don't realize that the things that they're doing are very evil. And on the other hand, like Romans chapter 1 said, they will look at little things people are doing, and they will be implacable. Implacable, let me find the word, you go to Romans chapter 1, and I think there, there's a list of sins in Romans chapter 1. But God tells us that those who do such things will never inherit the kingdom of God. So, uh, on one hand, there are very deep things that people should be doing. And they don't see them as important. The three sins of Sodom and Gomorrah, God says it is pride, it is idleness, doing nothing, it is fullness of bread. These three things are noted as not important today, but God destroyed whole cities because of this. These are some of the sins that God will destroy the world because of. Romans chapter 1, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication. Fornication, it doesn't mean sex out of marriage, you can look at my videos. Fornication, it means when you are married to someone and you have sex, this is fornication. Well, there's two things. A married person that has sex with a single person, this is called fornication. A married person who has sex with another married person, not the wife of the husband, it is called adultery. This is the sin. You know, Solomon, he has 600 wives, 300 concubines. So he had sex with 300 women, 300 women, which he was not married to. King David, the same. You go to, you look at my video, there's all the information there. So fornication, it means, sex, it, it means all the sexual sins. It is lesbianism, it is homosexuality, it is bestiality, it is incest, it is adultery. These are the sexual sins. Sex out of, out of marriage is never a sin. There's no text in the Bible that says so. Then it says wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, busters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they would do such things shall never inherit the kingdom of God. Shall never inherit the kingdom of God. So we see that's the implacable. Implacable, like, like the Bible says, one of the sins of the end time is this one. You do a little thing and people not only will judge you very harshly because of it, but they will pass very swift and fast judgment. We are seeing that now with the impeachment of Trump. Trump is doing a phone call. He called a phone call to Ukraine and they make a big deal out of it. Right? It's nothing. It is not important. It is no important. It's stupid. Stupidity. And they make a big deal out of it. This is one of the sins of the end times. When I was in France, uh, I think America too, sometimes I would pass flyers to people. You cannot imagine the anger of people they have for a piece of paper. Right? When people get so angry with me, I'm passing on papers, this is just a piece of paper, man. You're getting away for paper. Right? You're going to call the police and everything and your friends and everything and you're going to get, get into a fight with blood and you go to the hospital and everything and you make a court case, everything. All this because of a piece of paper. Right? This is called the signs of the end times. For the small things, people make a mohill of it. The biggest deal in the world. And the big things they should be looking at Pride is big things, the biggest sin you can have. 
The worst thing you can have in the world is pride. Fullness of bread, not helping anyone, just being selfish, just caring for yourself the rest of your life. People are dying all over the place. You could help them, you could give them a word, you could teach them how to make money. You never help anyone. This is a big deal. <clears throat> Idleness. Idleness, you spend your whole life doing nothing, not helping anyone. It is a very big deal. Yet today, most people don't realize it is a big deal. So this is the problem today. The big things people think is nothing. And the little things which are not important, they think it's a big thing. So let me, let me read you a quote I just got from a brother on the internet. It is impossible for one who has only a meager knowledge of God and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent, to represent God correctly or to wage the Christian warfare gaining victories over temptation to indifference and indolence. Indifference, indolence. Do you know these things? Most people don't care about indifference, indolence. These are big sins for God. He is purposeless. And that which he might have done with his original talent is left undone. And when he is weighted in the balances of the sanctuary, the verdict is passed. Weighted and found one thing. He is held accountable for all that a true Christian might have done with his entrusted talents. But because he has no realization of his responsibility, he frittered away his time, used his holidays for the gratification of self and instead of training the powers to serve the noblest use in becoming a missionary for God, he's speaking to his associates and winning them from sin to God, he failed to represent the interests of his master. And his light did not shine forth in good works to the world. The truth that is not permitted to work sanctification in the life works out the savior of death unto death. How did his soul become released from the claims of God that he might venture to do his own will? Let me read the, the last part. It says here, It was his, the neglect of God's great love, the failure to meet the wise designs of the Redeemer that separated him from his Heavenly Father. Oh, this one. Okay, this is here. For when God cannot use a soul in his human agent, as his human agent, to glorify his name by the salvation of others, he terms him as unprofitable servants. So this is the part I wanted to read. For when God cannot use a soul as his human agent to glorify his name by the salvation of others, he terms him as unprofitable servant, whose influence is not as the character to gather with Christ. So if someone is doing nothing in his life and not helping anybody, he's not going to go to heaven. It is accounted as unprofitable servant. So this message is extremely important. I never hear that, almost never, in the Christian circles, on the sermons in your local church. They always repeat the same things over and over again. But this is what makes someone to go to heaven or not. The idleness, fullness of bread, these are very big sins. Pride, extremely important. I mean, the reason why the, uh, there is sorrow on earth, there is sickness, there is violence. There is wars, there is terrorism, there is death, there is cancer, heart attack, bankruptcy, failure of money, uh, loneliness, suicide, uh, accidents, blood, killing, uh, knives. I mean, all the sufferings of the world that there is all, every day, every day, every day is because of that one day Satan chose to be proud. One day Satan says, I am God. I will no longer give the glory to God. I will be the God on earth. Earth belongs to me. And now I will do my own will on this earth. And all the suffering there is since the beginning of creation is because Satan chose to be proud. Oh yes, it is the biggest deal. If you're going to remain proud, you will be with Satan throughout eternity in hell. What will keep you now for following the truth? Light has shone into darkness. I know you can know the difference between the truth that will set you free and make you to go to heaven or the failure of fake Christianity, the fake Christianity that will destroy you. 
Fake Christianity. Just believe in Jesus. Fake Christianity. Fake Christianity, do what you want. No, you have to be like Jesus. And we have seen three of the saints. We have seen two more of the saints in the beginning of this, of this text right here. The people who are intolerance, intolerance, indifference, and indolence. Two more sins. So today we talked about five sins. We talked about indolence. We talked about indifference. We talked about pride. We talked about fullness of bread, being selfish. And we talked about uh, idleness, never helping, never loving, never caring, never doing anything for other people. If you do these things, no, you will never make it to heaven. A Christian is someone that cares for others and helps others. So you never make it to heaven. The name of Jesus will not save you. Just reading the Bible will never save you. If you're a pastor, you will never be saved. If you have these sins in your life, you have to resemble Jesus. So you to be humble is the opposite of pride. Fullness of bread, but to use your means to help others, this is to be like Jesus. Uh, Ellen G. White tells us that uh, Jesus often took his meal and gave it to others. They were more needy than him. And number three, it says that otherness, Jesus was continually helping others and preaching the gospel. And the two other things is in their friends, indolence. What will keep you now to believe that this is very the true message for the end time, that unless you resemble Jesus, you will never make it to happen. It says in the book of Revelation 1, 2, and 3, to him that overcometh, unless you overcome the sins, you will not look, you will never be like Jesus, you will be like the Paul. What will keep you now to look to find the truth, to follow Jesus, to make it before the end. Father God, help us to understand the word.